Hi, it's Kernatex here with a new series all about cross compiling using cross Linux from scratch. Now, um, if you don't know what cross compiling is, what I'll do is I'll go, go through quite quickly and uh, explain what, what it involves. But essentially, it's using um, a compiler on a particular architecture to create a new tool chain effectively in a new compiler for a completely different architecture and I really do mean completely different so for example we, would, we could go from um, an intel architecture to uh, for example an arm architecture um, irrespective of the number of bits the processor can, can address um, uh, you know you could go from 64 bits 32 bit or vice versa and so on in the demo I'll be using Linux Mint 19.2 as the host system to to build the cross Linux from scratch on the CLFS system and I'll be targeting an Intel 486 processor so I'll be going from a 64 bit um, AMD 64 instruction set to an Intel IA 32 bit um, instruction set so although they they share the same family they share genes 486 um, is basically a great 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 grandfather of the 64-bit uh, x86 processors we currently have um, they are essentially different um, uh, a 486 cannot run 64-bit software whereas the 64-bit um, AMD 64-bit um, Intel or AMD chip can execute 486 code so it's not um, uh, the, the demo won't have completely different processes but they're different enough to show that it works uh, a couple of reasons why I've chosen the 486 a I've got the 486 so I can um, test the final output on a real 486 processor to show that it works and also it makes the demonstration easy in that I can compile everything on the 64 bit and gain the advantages that it has through speed and multi cores and so on more memory um, there is a point in the cross compilation where if the architectures differ enough so for example if I was going from a, an Intel to an ARM where you have to compile the remainder of the system on the target architecture so if you were for example building for a Raspberry Pi using your Intel processor then it would obviously take a lot longer to, to build the last stages because you'd have to build them on the Raspberry Pi itself. So as I say, the reason I've, I've gone for a 486 partly is that I can compile all of the cross Linux from scratch on the 64-bit, but it will still run with 32-bit code on the 486. And um, we'll see that at the end. I'll, I'll do a video to show it loading, booting on a, 4, a real 486 physical machine. So what stages are involved in cross compilation? Well, there are several ways of cross compiling and several um, ways of achieving the final outcome. The way the uh, cross Linux from scratch do it is with effectively a four stage process. There's actually three stages to the cross compiling. Um, so if you see these first uh, well, they see the blue boxes at the top with the chevrons in between. The first three boxes are effectively the cross com compilation of the tool chain. And the last stage is just compiling the actual system that will run, the final system that will run on the target machine. If you've compiled with the um, Linux from scratch before, the LFS system, these stages are effectively the same apart from the second stage so the first stage is your host machine on cross compile the second stage is the cross compiler that we're building and this is the stage that doesn't exist on Linux from scratch the third stage on the cross compiling is creating a uh, an environment um, 
that allows us to go from the native, sorry, from the host system to the target system. And that effectively is the equivalent of chapter five in the Linux from scratch book. So it's, it's the, um, like, if you like, if it was the Linux from scratch, that would be the second stage. But here it's the third stage because we've previously had a cross compiler stage we've run. And then the final stage in both cross Linux from scratch and Linux from scratch is, is the final system. That's, that's the system that will be um, built and used and booted from. So, as I say, similar to Linux from scratch, we've just got this one extra stage. So, as you can see in, in these four boxes, the first stage is the host. As I say, it's going to be Linux Mint 19.2. I'm on an Intel 64-bit processor. So, um, that that means that the compiler GCC is what's, what's called a native compiler. It means that it can run 64-bit uh, code and it can compile 64-bit code. So basically, because the system's 64-bit, it's a native compiler. It runs and it compiles 64 -bit. It, it runs with 64-bit code and it can compile 64-bit code. And obviously, that's somewhere in the root file system. It will probably be something like user or might be, uh, sorry, user bin or it might be in bin. Um, but it'll be somewhere in the file system in, in the path. So as you can see at the top, the first little red dot it says chapter five. So that's chapter five of the cross Linux from scratch. So the reason why I've put it between those first two boxes is basically from the original base host system after chapter five or during chapter five, we get to the second box where we've, we've now got a compiler that will run on the host but it can actually compile 32-bit code. So it's a kind of a bit of a hybrid, but it's the key to how the cross-compile works because we've now got a compiler at this second stage which runs on 64-bit Intel processors or AMD, 64-bit AMD processors, but it compiles 32-bit Intel code. And you can see the location for that will be in the $CLFS location, which will be normally forward slash MNT forward slash CLFS. And then within that, it'll be in a cross tools subdirectory. So that's where that's built and um, deposited when it's, when it's created. So that's the extra stage that's not in the normal Linux from scratch stage. Then throughout chapter six, we'll be building a host uh, CLFS system which we use to build the final system. And as you can see, this now differs. We, re, we rebuild GCC for a second time and other parts of the tool chain as well um, with a GCC that can run on 32-bit architecture and it also compiles 32-bit code as well. So you can see we've gone from a compiler that can do 64-bit, runs on 64-bit, compiles 64-bit, then on to uh, the first GCC we build, which runs on 64-bit, but compiles 32-bit. And then the final uh, stage of building up the tool chain is to have a compiler and the tool chain that can run or recognize 32-bit and it can compile 32-bit. And you can see that's in the location of $CLFS tools. So you can see the similarity with the um, Linux from scratch in this cross Linux from scratch process. So those three stages are how we get to build a cross compiler on the host machine, which is in a way alien to the host machine, but it's, it's, we've done it so that we can actually build code that runs on the target machine. And then chapter 10, that's all to do with building the code for the final system. So we use our our compiler that runs 32-bit and builds 32-bit to build GCC and the rest of the tool chain, what, tool chain once again, um, but in, in a final environment that will be the environment that we um, will boot and run from. And as you can see, that's in the $CLFS location, which I say will be normally forward slash MNT forward slash CLFS. Um, You'll see some arguments you won't normally, see. well, you might see some of them, but uh, normally you don't see them, but they're quite important for the um, tool chain. 
sorry, the cross-compile tool chain to build them. Um, there's an argument called minus minus build, and it specifies the machine type of the current system. So at some points, you'll see that as being, um, well, it's, it's actually a triplet that goes against these arguments. So it might be something like, um, you know, 686 PC LFS Linux, for example, something along those lines. Um, but specifically, as you go along these stages, you'll see uh, 486 appearing more. Um, but but these these are the things that cause these switch these arguments are the things that cause GCC to behave differently and to create itself differently. Um, so yeah, build build will be the machine type of the current system. Host is the machine type that you're building for, and then target is the type of binary that will be created. So host might be different from target, for example, in the second stage because we're still on the 64-bit host, but we are actually building for the 32 bit binary so you will see various combinations of these and when you understand how these are working what they're doing it, it kind of makes sense because when you initially look at these parameters these arguments you think oh that looks a bit wrong to me but when you understand what's what's going on at each stage it, it does make sense it's quite correct um, so that's in a nutshell what the cross compilation is about we're getting from building um, with and running on one architecture to a completely different architecture, and we, we go through these different stages um, just to create an environment that can compile and and execute uh, the code on the different processor. And as I say, if it's a completely different technology, for example, if we're going from an Intel to a Raspberry Pi, then it's at the stage. Uh, the third stage where we choose whether we need to do that or if we can carry on compiling on the system we're on at the moment. But that will be my, made more clear when we come to that point in the demonstration. Now, there's some issues with the cross Linux from scratch project at the moment. Unfortunately, it hasn't been updated for about two and a half years now. Um, the last stable um, version of the book was um, about three years ago, I think it is. Um, it's a little bit out of date now. Um, yeah, the last version was version three, um, which was, oh, it's actually five years ago it is. Just, just check my notes. It's five years ago, so it's quite out of date. Um, and the last version that's in there, SVN, the last development version is from two and a half years ago, from July, uh, February, sorry, 2nd of July 2017. So it's um, even that's quite old. And what I've found is that um, probably because of development that I've worked from, I haven't gone from the older, older stable version, I've gone from development because it's, it's the only newest one available. But there are still some problems that occur. Um, I'm not sure whether it's to do with the um, actual text in the book, maybe you know if there are actual bugs in the book, or if it's because of the fact that the software is a little bit out of date, or, or what it is. But um, yeah, the, some some of the packages are hard to get hold of, and there's there's little fixes and workarounds that have got to be done but um, as we go through I'll, I'll point these out and um, it is still possible to get a, a working system albeit with some little hiccups and so on that it is possible to to um, get a working system um, when I was testing this I did do a test with uh, the latest versions of the packages but I thought it was a Although it worked, it was a little bit hairy to to do a demonstration on that. So what what I will be doing with the demonstration is using the versions that are in the book. Now there is a big caveat there because they're old versions; they're two and a half years old at least. There's the potential for security related issues to occur. So I would thoroughly recommend um, if you do do the cross compile and you do want to use it for applications or you know projects whatever 
I would thoroughly recommend that after you've built cross Linux from scratch and you've got a working final system to go to the Linux from scratch project and then rebuild uh, all the packages again using the Linux from scratch instructions on your target machine if, if you want to actually use um, use what you you produce in cross Linux from scratch in anger. Um, not only does it mean you get the latest packages and therefore um, the you know reduce your chances of problems with security and so on or bugs and whatever. Um, the book, as I say itself, I think has got a few bugs and problems with it. So because obviously Linux from scratch is still actively maintained, you will get a system that not only is it up to date it will be free from any bugs or errors and so on and of course once you've got that system you could go on to beyond the linux from scratch if you wanted to from there although clfs has got a beyond linux from scratch as i say it's it's out of date it's not been updated for two years so i, I wouldn't really trust it unless you know what you're doing of course you know you can do do what you like but i wouldn't if you're uh, you know never done this before or you're a bit unsure about it i wouldn't recommend keeping the the final package for serious use build linux from scratch on top of the cross linux from scratch um, so obviously if, if you may be doing this just for the sake of doing it just to learn from it in which case you dispose of it and you may be thinking well why don't i just build linux from scratch on the target machine anyway the thing is you might not be able to um, there's one guy who's uh, chatting on on the um, comments on one of the videos who was trying to get Linux from scratch um, running on a 486 um, and I think the problem he was having is that he couldn't find a host that was suitable to to actually run the Linux from scratch project to go through the whole book so th this would be a, one way of doing it obviously if you can't find a distribution for the target processor that you want to put Linux from scratch on then this is how you do it with, with cross Linux from scratch so um, but yeah as so I thoroughly recommend after you build this if you want to keep it just build Linux from scratch on top and top of cross Linux from scratch you you know it will take a lot longer but just going through the process of cross Linux from scratch you'll see what's what's going on <laughs>